I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com here in La Quinta, California for REITWISE 2013, NARIT's Law, Accounting, and Finance Conference. Joining me is Tom Wilkin, partner with PwC's National Office. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Matt. There seems to be so much angst regarding the global convergence of accounting standards. What are the views of your real estate clients regarding global convergence, and how is your firm dealing with the SEC's non-decision? I think at this point, um, uh, there's a fair amount of, of dissatisfaction and um, just tiredness of dealing with the whole convergence projects in general. It's been going on many years longer than it was supposed to. There doesn't seem to be any real light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, even the, the, the major boxcar projects, many of which that will very significantly affect real estate, including revenue recognition, leasing, and to a lesser extent, financial instruments, uh, will clearly have major implications to our clients, and, and many of them at, at this point are taking the position of almost, you know, tell me when it's done and I'll start to focus on it at, at this point because I've been hearing about it for so long. And how will the board's new revenue recognition proposal impact real estate companies? And given the principle-based approach, is there a fear that some may default to existing accounting literature? Well, there's a clearly a more than a fear, a, a desire on the part of many to default to the existing literature. I think, from a practical perspective, in the in the real estate space, uh, in the U.S., uh, it, it's unclear to many that it, is it really broken. Um, from a, a practical perspective, it's certainly many uh, areas of real estate, in particular home builders, uh, timeshare players, uh, master plan communities. Uh, those types of, of segments of the real estate market <coughs> will clearly be affected by the RevRec standard. Um, somewhat as a surprise recently in the last few weeks, the kind of generic real estate rental properties, office buildings, retail and the like, uh, there seems to be some uncertainty about whether those would actually be governed by the standard. And the boards are, are looking at, or at, not the boards, plural, the board, the FASB in this case, is looking at potentially uh, having a, a separate treatment for those, in essence being the sale of a business. Uh, now that opens up all kinds of issues that are really unclear where they're going to go at this stage and whether they're going to be done before the RevRec project uh, exposure or the, the final standard is actually issued or whether they'll be addressed later, given, given the long window of adoption date out in 2017. And shifting gears a little bit, how will the new leases proposal impact NARI member companies? Well, the impacts are really twofold. Certainly from a business perspective, uh, any real estate company is affected by something that will affect how their customers, their tenants, uh, change their business practices as a result. Uh, it's likely going to vary by the different property types that are out there. Uh, certainly in an apartment or a hotel side, for example, there's going to be almost no impact in terms of customer behavior. Uh, but you might see uh, in other property types like long dated single tenant lease type properties where you actually have them change the, the types of, of terms that they negotiate for and the types of transactions that they engage in. So that could have a significant impact on their business. Switching to the accounting side from a lessor perspective, uh, if the the dual model that is being proposed with the practical expedience that they have uh, in them are completed, you'll generally end up for most, but not all of, you, of the stuff that you have existing operating lease accounting for today, have a similar accounting going forward. But most, not all, is the operative term there. There, there clearly be things on the margin, uh, for example, longer dated single tenant leases or long dated significant leases, be it at, you know, multiple floors of an office building or anchor tenants, could end up in the finance model, and you could end up having to do the gain or loss calculation in, her, in, a, in a receivable and residual approach. That would be a pretty dramatic change for lessors. And last question, have, have we heard the last of REITs being impacted by the investment company's proposal? Uh, clearly no. Uh, it, it's certainly not going to go forward as it was, uh, but they have uh, an ongoing discussion in, in part to help deal with some of the issues for the real estate funds who are kind of out in nowhere land right now that they want fair value and want investment company accounting, but it's not clear that they would get it. So there is a phase two and a potentially phase three of the investment company 
project that will deal specifically with real estate. The REITs may get sucked back into that. It's unclear where that's going to go. Uh, we have heard that phase two will probably start up and maybe even finish this year. Uh, but it's not clear that'll be the end game and whether phase three will get done this year or next year. So th there's going to be some moving parts, but the intention, I think, is to try and resolve all these issues in the next one to two years. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.